Hello, my name is Sosa Lovo, and I'm currently working as a fifth grade educator in LUSD. I'm also a doctoral uh, student at Antioch University trying to pursue my doctorate and answer the question, how do you intrinsically motivate a leader to in that quality? You know, because ultimately for me, what I look for and what I'm trying to achieve is, you know, building quality education. You know, where is it? The, always, the question that I'm always asked, always, how do I improve the scores? How do I get that? I always go back to quality, intrinsic motivation. That's why my focus is how do I intrinsically motivate somebody to do well? And I think in my 15 years of working in education, I feel like I've been able to master that with students because I've done that. It's in the classroom. It's there. But that wasn't enough for me. I needed to move up more. I needed to do something better, something, you know, broader. And the way that I, that's the only way that I can think of is administration. And that's why I pursued my, my the journey took me to becoming a, an, an administrator. But ultimately, what is quality? You know, everybody has a very definition of quality. And I go back to if somebody, you know, it's this, this self-reflective piece of, Am I doing something to the best of my ability at this time? That's what I define quality to be. But how do you know what it is? Am I doing something just to turn it in? Or am I doing something because this is the best work that I have? Those are the two things that I go back to. Um, so my journey, you know, I began education looking at um, being a one-on-one -on -one aide, you know, being an after-school coach, you know, looking at going through the ranks of every position that education has. Um, and I perfected becoming a teacher. You know, I, I I enjoyed it. And I was like, no, I need to be an administrator. I became an administrator. And I was doing well, but it wasn't enough. I needed to go back into the public system. I was working at a charter school. So I worked at private charter. Now I'm in a public sector. And in that, I couldn't get in as an administrator. Because the, the notion was that if you're not in the district, it was more difficult to get in. So I, you know gave up administration and became a teacher again. And I had fun. Now I'm there. But what what is happening? What what is happening? What do I notice? I notice that there's a lot of teachers in the public sector that have given up, you know, or the leaders that have given up because there's so much bureaucracy into the system that we're currently in. There's what we, we call, you know, burnout, um, burnout situations, but it's no longer a burnout. We call it moral injury. This whole concept that we're constant, there's so many things that we have to do. Education is no longer just, you know, getting a child to read, you know, learn to read and write, you know, comprehend, write. It's more, there's so many layers because there's so many things that are happening. And we have to take that into consideration. So when I'm teaching uh, at a credential program in Mount St. Mary's, uh, or I used to teach at Antioch as well, um, one of the essence that I'm want people to understand is that effective teaching doesn't happen without building genuine relationships. Relationships is the essence of what I'm trying to achieve. And I create that with adults now. Being, knowing the fact that I want to go into administration, that's what I do. I became the UTLA chapter chair at my school. And how did I do that? By building relationships, by letting them see that I am there for the right reasons. So what are the reasons that I'm there for? For the children, for, to make sure that they get the best education possible, even though it's a public education. Why is it that I have to pay to get quality when the system is supposed to give me that quality through public funds? That's what public education, but we're not getting that. So then that's what I'm studying. My research is all about, you know, enacting leaderships, looking at trans, trans, um, trans, uh, what's the word? I can't even think of it right now. There's so many things in my head. Transformational leadership. There it is. Transformational leadership. Why? Because of this concept of constantly reflecting on yourself, constantly reflecting on your practice. What is it going to be changing? How can we build relationships? How do you look at quality? You know, what is this quality world? And a lot of it is, actively listening are you listening to the people that work with you are you giving them a voice do they feel empowered because i don't do this by myself i have a team in my class every morning i start with 
a circle, a community circle, a morning meeting, I call it, because everybody gets to share what they talk about. And every class I start with, that's what it is. They tell me what their day was like. They tell me something fun. They go off tangents. And guess what? After that, I get to know who they are. They understand that they can build their relationships. And that's the same reason why I have teachers that have made a difference in my in my life is because the relationships that we built, that we were able to build together. And, and it made education fun. It made learning fun. And that's what we do. And then my job after hearing all about their lives, some of the stories are just very harsh. You're like, wow. Now they have to focus on it, on learning something. That's not their priority. Their priority sometimes is, you know, I don't have a place to live. And I'm here trying to go here. This is like my my common thing for some of the students that I work with. This is like my common ground. This is like the most consistent thing in my life, coming to school, seeing you. And that's the most consistent thing. So is them understanding how to divide and multiply three digit fractions and and all these things that I have to put in the curriculum. No, that's not, that's not relevant to them. But do I want them to want to learn something about it? Yes. But learn life skills. And that's what for me, my first master's was on lifelong learning. How do we cultivate that? It all stems to the same concept, but it is my job as a facilitator, my job as the educator to tailor the information that they provide me and facilitate the curriculum that I know that I need to get through, life that I have given, and, and their perspective, and move things around so that they can have fun. That's what I do. How do I empower that? I empower that with children. I'm trying to empower that in adults. Here in the union, I've now joined the, the steering committees because why? We want to make a difference. We want to understand that teachers have a voice, a big voice. We are the main ones there trying to get in there. And I want to become an assistant principal so that, or a principal so that I can be running a school to cultivate this kind of mentality. And people have told me, you should become the principal. But the problem is, it's bureaucracy. Sometimes there are systems that put you down. But I am not letting that happen. I'm going to continue fighting, pushing through. And hey, if you're watching this and you're looking for a principal, right here you know i'm going to be that you know that quality that school that's going to be looked at you know why because I, I i've shown you i can we can look at data if you want to and see the progress of how my child has gone in from a third grade at the beginning of the year to the third grade at the end of the year we can look at fifth grade data how they've gone how the team that i've worked with has excelled because of the same thing that i do relationship intrinsic motivation quality what is quality? You know, transformational leadership. I now focus, my leadership style is design-inspired leadership because I did architecture in my undergrad because I love designing. And they asked me, why did you leave architecture? Why well, haven't left architecture? I went into architecture for designing. And I'm just designing a different campus. It was a paper to building. Now I'm designing a brain. I'm designing a mind. I'm cultivating that idea that there's little things that you can tweak in your mind to make you more effective. And that's what I do. That's what education should be. Thank you.